Hello friends, this is Dr. Wissimarazu from Ayari. Today we are going to discuss the noise in angle modulation system. In previous sessions we discussed noise in amplitude modulation systems like uh, standard AM, BSB, SSB we discussed. Now we are going to discuss noise in angle modulation system. How the noise is passed through this angle modulation system. Okay, coming to the topic. So the generalized form of angle modulated carrier is represented as S of D. So S of D is our angle modulated wave. So we can represent as AC cos 2 pi FCT plus pi of T. We know that AC is a carrier amplitude, FC is a carrier frequency, where pi of t is the instantaneous phase angle. Why? Because we take in this pi of t in angle modulation, having two varieties one is a frequency modulation, and another is a phase modulation. So, phi of t, which is equal to 2 pi kf integral 0 t m of t dt for fm. Where pi of t, which is equal to kp m of t for pm. Pm is phase modulation. So, which angle modulation we take? We go to substitute the two value. For for example, f we take it as a uh, pi of t, which is equal to two pi kf integral zero t m of t dt. So, I am going to substitute this uh, f m. Why? Because I am going to calculate uh, the noise calculations in FM system. So I am using pi of t as a 2 pi kf integral 0 t m of t dt. Now this n of t noise signal may be expressed as n of t which is equal to nc of t cos 2 pi fct minus ns of t sin 2 pi fct. Which is nothing but n of t is a narrowband noise which having the in phase and quadrature components. So we can represent n i of t or n c of t for in phase and n q of t or n s of t for quadrature. So we can use uh, any of those two or it is for represent that in phase and quadrature components. Now this above equation is going to uh, modify as n of t which is equal to r of t into cos of 2 pi f c t plus psi of t. So here we could represent it in terms of the amplitude and phase. So for r of t which is equal to square root of n c square t plus n square s of t and psi of t which is equal to tan inverse n s of t by n c of t. So taken as the angle and the amplitude of this uh, narrow band noise. So now noise in FM. So how this noise is going to be calculated in FM? So first we are going to apply S of T. So S of T is a modulated signal. Here we take it as a modulated signal as a frequency modulator. So S of T is FM here. And another one is a noise that is a, our what which is going to add with that uh, signal. So that is the noise. And of the combination of this signal plus noise, which is going to apply band pass filter. And uh, after band pass filter, we follow that uh, limiter. Uh, after limiter, we have a discriminator. And finally, that uh, low pass filter. That limiter which uh, uh, removes that amplitude variations, any amplitude variations. That were that going to remove by the uh, limiter and is committed nothing but uh, detector or demodulator. And finally, having low pass filter that low pass signal, uh, which allows by that low pass filter. Why? Because our original messaging is a low frequency signal. Why it is a baseband? So, baseband means 
the frequency there. So finally, our output is nothing but our message signal. So the noise signal at the BPF output, that is the bandpass filter output, is X of T, which is equal to S of T plus N of T. So we know that S of T. S of T is the modulated signal. Here I am considering FM. So AC cos of 2 pi of CT plus pi of T plus this N of T. N of T here taken as uh, uh, in, the, in terms of uh, phase also. So that's why the amplitude R of T into cos of 2 pi of CT plus psi of T. Here if there is a diagram is given for this uh, uh, angles. So here taken as uh, AC that is a uh, carrier amplitude to that uh, R of T and finally the resultant to get so the phase of uh, theta of T of the resultant phasor representing X of T is obtained directly from that above figure. So that is uh, represented as pi of T plus tan inverse of R of T sine of pi of T psi of T minus pi of T divided by AC plus R of T into cos of psi of T minus pi of T. So this is our the resultant phasor which is obtained from that uh, what you draw that figure. Okay. But for simplicity, uh, we assume that amplitude of the unmodeled carrier is very large so that the carrier to noise ratio CNR measured at the discriminator input is large compared to unity. So, some modification is done regarding that uh, CNR. So, that is the theta t approximately equal to pi of t plus r of t by AC sine of psi of t minus pi of t. So, now I am going to substitute this. Uh, pi of t. So here the pi of t is 2 pi kf integral m of t dt. Why? Because here this is for fm signal. So I am going to calculate in the noise calculation in fm. So here I am taking as fm. If you are calculating a phase modulation, you can use a p of t. Okay. That is a phase modulation. So 2 pi kf m of t directly, you can substitute that one. So finally, the discrete output. Why? Because in the previously we see that the block diagram. So we have the discriminator. So the discriminator output is nothing but V of t, which is equal to 1 by 2 pi, the differentiator of theta of t. So the rate, the rate of the change of uh, theta of t we are calculating. So V of t which is equal to Kf m of t plus nd of t. So here uh, the noise term nd of t is uh, we taken. Why? Already we discussed that noise you can't eliminate completely but you can suppress and filter by using some filters. But some of that noise will pass through that uh, uh, system. So this noise which uh, also passes through the detector so the detector noise or discriminator noise we can represent as nd of t which is equal to 1 by 2 pi ac d by dt of r of t into sine of psi of t minus pi of t okay so that nd of t is the uh, discriminator output noise we can calculate that noise term so the noise nd of t or the discriminator output will depends uh, only on the characteristics of the carrier and narrowband noise. So again, we are going to simplify that uh, noise nd of t as one by two pi ac d by dt into r of t into sine psi of t. So finally, nd of t we can uh, written as in terms of the quadrature component of the narrowband noise. Why? Because uh, we know that N of T, that is narrowband noise, which contains in phase and quadrature components. So, this discriminator output noise, which depends on that uh, quadrature component of the narrowband noise. So, we can, that is the directly proportional, this ND of T is directly proportional to NS of T. NS of T is nothing but quadrature component of the narrowband noise. 
So when the discriminant output uh, is passed through this LPF, we get that uh, output, the discriminant output which is passes through LPF. So the finally the demoter output which is uh, taken as V0 of D is Kf M of D. Why? Because that LPF which allows the signal only but uh, ND of D is that uh, noise component. So generally the noise is a high frequency term so it is going to filter by that low pass filter. So finally the average output signal power is equal to Kf square D. So that is uh, represented as a VSO. And we may obtain the noise process ND of D. That is a discriminator uh, noise output by passing through NS of D through a linear filter. That means we are going to uh, filter that noise by using some uh, linear filter which has a transfer function has a H of F which is equal to uh, JF by AC. So the power spectral density of that uh, uh, discriminator noise which is related to the power spectral density of the quadrature component of NS of T. Why? Because we already said that this ND of T which is uh, directly proportional to the NS of T that is quadrature component of the narrower noise. So here we can relate this uh, the power spectral density of that uh, discriminator noise SND of F in terms of uh, uh, quadrature component NS of T. So S N D of F which is equal to mod H F square into S N S of F. So mod H F is the filter uh, transfer function into this uh, power spectral density of that uh, quadrature component. So here I will substitute this H of F is J F by A C into S N S F. So finally I got F square A C F square by A C square into S N S of F. So, if the bandpass filter at the input of the FM receiver is assumed to have an ideal bandpass characteristic of bandwidth Bt, then the narrowband noise N of T will have a similar power spectral characteristic. So, these are the characteristics which having a filter response and bandpass filter response finally got this one. So the output of the bank components of uh, ND of T will reject by that low pass filter. So the power spectral density SN0 of F of the noise is not appearing at the receiver output as S0 of F which is equal to N0 F square by AC square. So here we are taking that uh, Average output noise power is obtained by integrating this power spectral density of S not F. So PNO we get as a 2 N not W cube by 3 S square. So this is our average output noise power. So we determine that average output signal power as K F square P. Then the output signal to noise ratio. So signal to noise ratio at the output in FM system which is equal to 3 AC square KF square P divided by 2 N naught W cube. So we are going to substitute signal power and noise power. So you get signal to noise ratio at the output. So now the average power in the model signal S of T is AC square by 2 and the average noise power in the message bandwidth is W and not. So here I'm going to be calculating SNR signal noise ratio for the channel in FM. That is equal to AC square by 2 into W and not. AC square by 2 is the average for the modulated signal. And W and not is the noise power in the message bandwidth. So I got SNR output, I got SNR channel. So I'm going to find the figure of merit of the FM receiver. So it got it to the figure of merit of frequency modulation is uh, SNR output divided by SNR channel. So of substituting we got figure of merit is 3F, 3K F square P 
operate by W square, where P is the signal power and KF sub is the ampere sensitivity of that modulator and W is the bandwidth. So this is our figure of merit of FM receiver. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.